Hey everybody, this is our first video and today we're going to be matting a picture and then framing it. We split the matting and framing up into two videos. So to see the framing video, which is a shadow box frame, uh, you can go to our channel and go to the shadow box frame or click the link below. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Please let me know what you think and of course if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Thanks. Okay, so since we figured out that the picture is 13 by 19, we have to determine how big to make the mat. I typically add 3 inches to each side, which is a 3 inch border. You can do any size you want, bigger. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing smaller than 3 inches though, it just kind of looks strange. So with 3 inches, we're adding 3 inches to each side, so we're just adding 6 inches to each dimension. So 6 plus 13 is 19, and 6 plus uh, 19 is 25. So that's how big we need to cut the mat. Before that though, I want to talk a little bit about the mat boards. We have the top mat board and the backer mat board. The top mat board is what will cut the window hole in, and this is the, the backer is what we'll actually attach the picture to. You can use, well, I always use a two-ply for the backer and you always want to use a four-ply for the window. The reason is, is because it's thicker and if you're using a mat board cutter and you do a beveled edge, it's going to actually be a beveled edge. With a two-ply, it can't be a beveled edge. It wouldn't bevel. You can use a four ply for the backer, but it's a little excessive. And you'll see in the next video when we actually frame it that we use a foam core backer uh, behind the mat. For that reason, we don't actually need a very thick backer board. And this gives us a little bit more room in the frame. So, four ply and the two ply. Four ply being the top, two ply being the bottom. So now we can go ahead and start getting our measurements. First one I'm going to do is the 19 because I want to cut it long ways and then I'll cut the 25 out of here. The reason for that is I can save this other side as a pretty big piece for another project. So I'm going to go ahead and get my measurement at 19. And I'm just making one small mark, and then do it at the bottom. And then I'm going to do it to the second piece as well. I always make my marks on the back side of what I'm using, so. I just flip that piece around because I don't want to put the good side down. And with this smaller piece, it doesn't matter which side. Okay, now that I've made those marks, we can go ahead and start um, making our long cuts. Okay, so this is a mat board cutter. Um, it's the best thing for cutting mats. It has two tools. This one is for cutting straight lines and this one is for the beveled. We're not going to use this one yet because we're not there yet. We're ready for the straight lines. So we bring it over. This side is the 19 side. I always put it behind just in case the razor slips. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up my marks with this edge, which if you're using a ruler, you just line it up with the edge of the ruler. So once I have my lines marked or, or up there, I press down and apply pressure. And this has two little grooves that slide in this track, so I put it on there, push my razor down, pull straight through. And this funny thing about 
two ply is it doesn't cut very clean but that's not a big deal because we're never going to see it at the end. I just pull off these little loose bits. This is the four ply. I'm going to do the same thing. Same thing. Then we're ready to make the other measurements. Okay, so now we're going to do the window. Move this out of the way. Okay, so like I said, three inches on either side. So I'm going to mark it three and 22. Three, 22. And this I'm drawing, I'm marking on the back side of the mat board that won't be seen at the end. And I'm actually going to draw lines because it helps when I'm cutting it. And same thing here. Three. 16 3 and 16 Alright, now we're ready to cut it. Okay, so for this we're going to do a beveled edge, so we're using the beveler for the mat cutter. And what's really important is if you do have a mat board or you're using a mat board cutter that you're unfamiliar with, you want to pay attention to the way that it attaches to the track and the direction that the blade is beveling. Because like I said, this is the back side. So I'm going to be cutting through the back to the front. And the way that you want the bevel is the bevel coming from outside down into the picture. So because of that, I want to put my mat board like this instead of on the other side when I'm doing the line because I'm going to be cutting down and away from the picture because this is the back side. And if for whatever reason, if the beveler that you're using attaches to the track but goes the opposite direction, you would do it the opposite way that I'm doing it. So I'm lining it up. And I, uh, my mat board cutter has some marks. The thickest in the center is at the end, I line up this big thick center line to this line and that's the right place to stop. But when I start, I have to start farther up because I'm cutting the way the blade goes. I'm cutting down in this way. So I actually have to start a little bit higher than the line.
have it. Okay, so now we have to attach the backer mat board to the top mat board. And what we use for that is linen hinging tape. The reason for this is because the linen is archival and acid free. So I measure it out. I don't go to the very top or the very bottom. I just come a little bit short. And this linen tape has some paper backing that you have to peel off. Some other linen tapes you have to wet. I don't like using them because I don't want to get water around my mat board. So I put it over the joint, make sure they're nice and lined up, press it down, and then they're hinged. Now, we have to add the picture and get the picture centered. Okay. Add the picture in. We have to kind of move it around. If you remember, in the beginning, I added a half inch on either side because of the signature. I wanted to have the signature in there. the bottom right and that looks pretty good so I have it there I don't want it to move so what I did was I took a scrap piece of mat board and a tape measure that's got a little weight to it and place it in the center so that it doesn't move now in the corners what we use are photo corners and they're little triangular things that have a little pocket and they're sticky on the back side. And the corner of the, the photo goes into that little pocket. So I just lift up each corner, slide it in, and push it down. And I'm even with this weight on here, it can still move, so I still have to be pretty careful. I always hold it down with one finger and pull it up so that I'm still doing my best to not move it. Do that on all four corners. And there you have it.